because I don't know who's running the branch because everybody's here. So I apologize if you had slow service from 12 to 1 o'clock today in Metro Cordova. So you're, you can vouch for us that we're here, though, for good cause. So a couple of things. Uh, I went to my first event just a couple weeks ago, I'll be honest, here in Rancho Cordova, and uh, had an opportunity to uh, listen in to obviously one of our uh, economic speakers as well as Brett. Brent. Um, and then I saw Donald. Uh, he was a uh, em former employee of ours at Wells Fargo for 10 plus years. I had no idea he was the mayor. So <laughs> I learned a lot that morning. It's only been a couple of years. <laughs> but, uh, I will say this, uh, I thought Shelly and Diane asked me to come up here to dig up some dirt on him and I, for the last week or so I've been vetting him in all directions and I cannot find anything. So he is a true politician and I went to deep sources, some deep sources to, to find some information but uh, couldn't find anything. He's a great guy. One thing I will share, uh, prior to me moving up to the Sacramento area, I ran the Solano County area for about 10 years. And uh, as you know, uh, Donald supported our community uh, involvement and investments and things of that nature. He was always the first one down there in Solano County, a county that gets lost a lot. Um, but he was always there front and center, so thank you, Donald, for that. We've made a lot of good connections, and we made some nice improvements there as well. So then in 2013, I moved up here thinking I'd work more with Donald, then he left Wells Fargo. So, you know, I don't take it personal. But uh, anyway, no, it's, it's a great opportunity to continue our, our work together as we try to build this great community here in Rancho Cordova. So, with that, that's the unscripted version. Now I have the scripted version here. Um, so, Mr. Donald Terry, uh, his bio, got a bio here. Uh, when Donald Terry steps to the podium today, he continues a 14-year tra tradition begun with the incorporation of Rancho Cordova, in which the mayor of Rancho Cordova helped kick off the year, sharing his vision for the city at the Rancho Cordova luncheon. That's us, full house, so very nice. Uh, now serving his first term as mayor of Rancho Cordova, Donald was elected to the council in 2012 and again in 2016. Before that, he represented part of Rancho Cordova on the Sacra Sacramento Unified School District Board of Education for four years. He considers halting the planned closure of Amwin Elementary and its conversions to a K-8 Waldorf-inspired school amongst his proudest accomplishments. Moving to city government, Donald led the 2014 campaign to pass Measure H. This half-cent local sales tax measure is now generating an additional $7 million in a year for community projects ranging from arts, education, to public safety. He has supported many economic development homeownership organizations in our region, is a big brother for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Greater Sacramento. I did not know this. He once camped out at the IMAX marquee in downtown Sacramento and vowed not to come down until 100 men signed up to be Big Brothers. It took over 24 hours to accomplish this goal. So serving as mayor of Rancho Cordova is a, is a volunteer gig, right? Uh, Donald is the Director of Real Estate Development for Neighbor Who Works Homeownership Center Sacramento Region where he oversees single family for sale of affordable housing developments in 11 county region in Northern uh, California among many other tasks. So I can tell you this, he played a huge role in helping a lot of the young leaders of Wells Fargo getting connected with these folks as well prior to taking on his new role. We are proud to say Donald had a distinguished career with Wells Fargo, even though he jumped off the stage, Coach, we still love him, uh, along, with, along the way today, so that makes this a great day for, the org for our organization as well. Donald married wife, Angela, 2009. They have two sons, Keaton, five-year-old, Holden, one-year-old, that's busy, uh, whose antics are local Facebook, Facebook sensations. So it's my pleasure to welcome Mayor of Rancho Cordova, Donald Terry. Thank God they fixed that mic. I don't want to stand up here for 20 minutes holding that. All right, so you're clicking? All right, well, wow, after that intro, I could probably just sit down and we could all move on. Um, but they said to keep it short so we all can get back out in this wonderful weather. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure our cops are very busy making sure that no one's speeding. Um, but yeah, so I, I had to cut down my speech. So I threw out about 10 pages, but lucky for you, I have about 35 left, so it's good to go. Um, so first off, thanks to the, to the sponsors, one for Wells Fargo. I, I'm, I'm wondering how this all worked out, because actually normally uh, this speech is done in January. Um, and actually, I was booked to go to the US Conference of Mayors, and I couldn't do it because I was going to be gone on that Friday of last month um, at the conference because we had booked to stay through the weekend so that we could go to the inauguration. 
then the election happened and I didn't stay that long. Uh, so again, thank you and thank you for public services. Another interesting connection this morning, it was the first time in about a year that I remembered to put my batteries out. So those of you, for those of you who don't know, if you put your batteries in a, in a baggie, you put them on top of your recycling bin, they'll take your batteries too, but make sure that you don't just throw them in there, right? They, they need to take them separately. But I actually did that this morning. Okay, am I, am I on this? Okay. All right, so the first thing is, um, in 2010, Ken Cooley, my predecessor and good friend, uh, kicked off something he called uh, 20 Tons in 2010. Um, and it was a, a series of uh, mayor's walks that they were doing in concert with that, but he was trying to get people to be more active and to be healthy in, in, the, um, in life in general. So we continued these mayor's walks ever since then. So every summer, there's a handful of mayor's walks, usually starting at a school, walking around the neighborhood. Um, so this year we're going we're gonna to do something a little bit differently. I'm going to take my phone out of my pocket because somebody's trying to get a hold of me. Okay. Hopefully that's no one in this room. Um, <laughs> so this year we're going we're gonna to kick off something new called Moving with the Mayor. And so we're going to do a handful of different events throughout the, the region, or uh, throughout, I'm sorry, throughout the city um, over the next year. And starting looking for Maria, I want to say I just agreed to Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday morning, uh, I'm going to be working out with our police over at uh, the gym at, at the police station. But we're also going to do um, some jump roping things with kids. We're going to do some yoga classes, evidently, somebody <laughs> might have told me about. Uh, we're going to play in some trees. We're going to ride bikes. We're going to do a whole bunch of really fun stuff. Um, so studies show that a, the, um, a, an adult uh, should be getting about 150 active minutes a month, or no, I'm sorry, active minutes a week. Um, no. Yeah, 150 minutes a, 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 a week um, of active uh, activity, and then uh, kids should be getting an hour a day. Um, and I know as one, I probably haven't gotten 150 active minutes in a long time. So this is part of my New Year's resolution. You're all just coming along with me. Uh, <laughs> So that's our, our new website, so you can go there. Um, I went there this morning. This actually exists, but we don't have anything listed there. Um, I'm guessing we'll put up our stuff for Tuesday here pretty soon. Um, so next, and we have our folks. Where are the Folsom Lake College folks? There they are, great people. Um, so we launched February 1st, right? Yeah. So part of our community enhancement funds, last year we started, um, or we committed $100,000 to something called Ranch Cordova Promise. Um, and there are promise programs throughout the country actually now, but the first one in this region is our city. And this is really, really exciting. Actually, West Sacramento just committed funds, and they're kind of riding on our coattails, hopefully trying to get theirs up and running uh, this fall for them in um, uh, Sac City College. But ours started February 1st, and as of today, we have 92 students that have, signed, uh, have applied for this program. And what this means is every graduating high school senior is eligible for you just got to live in the city, and you can attend Folsom Lake College full-time, free for your first year. Oh, wow. But there are some things you have to do. One, you got to prove you live here. you got to graduate from high school, and you got to apply by March 31st. So if anyone knows of any, any students that are graduating, you just got to live in the city. It's not, this isn't just for Cordova High. If you're going to Rosemont High, if you're going to Pleasant Grove, so long as you live in the city, you can, you can get this. But we're not going to stop there. There's actually a, a couple other things that we're going to work on. So one, our great city manager here and Bob McGarvey actually serve on the Folsom Lake College uh, Foundation. We're going to be working to raise some money this year to expand this program and to ensure its long-term viability, not just community enhancement funds. Another thing we're going to work on, and I might be working with a few bankers to do this, um, but studies show that if a student has a college savings account in their name, they are six times more likely to go to college. You know what? All they need, and that, that doesn't mean that they have a college savings account, but if they, have a, if they have a bank account, a savings account in their name, they're six times more likely to go to college. So we're going to look at uh, kicking off something called an individual development account, where we may look through the Community Enhancement Fund at matching dollar for dollar families that save for their students' future. And another thing we've been funding is uh, different field trips for students throughout the city. Um, but uh, another thing that I learned about actually through the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and according to the West Sacramento Mayor, because I couldn't verify this number, but I'm going to say it anyways, 
Um, students that visit a college campus in fourth grade are three times more likely to go to college. So we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna work with my colleagues, hopefully, to uh, make sure that every fourth grader in our city visits a college this year. Let's see what else we got. <coughs> Actually, let me go back really quick. Um, just talking about uh, schools, if anybody knows anybody that um, is interested in being a superintendent or president of a college, there's a lot of job openings right now. So I'm gonna just throw this out there for our, my good friend Chris Clark, who, who, interestingly enough, he is the first school board member to live in our city of 72,000 people since I was a school board member. Thanks for stepping up, but yeah. In a city of 72,000 people, we did not have a school board member for four years that lived in this city. Um, but there are two superintendent jobs opening open right now that are parts. So Sac City Unified is hiring a superintendent, and uh, Falls Cordova uh, Unified is hiring a superintendent, and Folsom Lake College is hiring a, a president right now. So if you want to work in education, this might be your chance. <laughs> So um, another thing that we've been working on, especially in the last couple of years, um, mainly in Cordova Meadows and Lincoln Village, is something called asset-based community development. And we've been working with a consultant to do this, and hopefully we'll, we'll find the funding to expand this to a few more neighborhoods this year. But, and, and you know, Jamie kind of talked about it, I spent about the better part of a decade working for Wells Fargo doing community development. And the, the normal way of doing community development was you'd go in, you'd study a community, and you'd find out what's wrong with it. You find out that teen pregnancy rates are high, and murder rates are high, and the dropout rates are high, and then you throw money at the, at the worst problems that they had trying to fix it. What this model says, and, this is, and we've done this in two neighborhoods now, is we get community, uh, community leaders and just neighbors together, put them in a room, get a map of their neighborhood, hand them some post-its, and tell them, write down what's, what's best about your neighborhood. We put it up on the wall. And where those things are, where are the assets and the best things about your neighborhood. And then after they identify that, they figure out how they can use those assets to build a better neighborhood. And so in Lincoln Village, um, they decided that, that they had a lot of great families, but they didn't have a really safe place to, to, to trick or treat at night. So they decided to do their own trunk or treat um, and movie night. And I think they expected 100 people um, to show up. And after the fifth run to Chick-fil-A for food, and they realized it was about 500 people that showed up. Um, in Cordova Meadows, um, and, and I'm going to start off with a story that our police department has been working there for a long time trying to improve that neighborhood. Um, and they actually tried to do a block party that not a lot of people showed up to. After we started this work in that neighborhood, and, that, and that, those residents decided that they wanted to do a block party, hundreds of people showed up. I think they ran out of food that time too. Um, but it's turned into ESL classes in, in these neighborhoods. It's turned into the, the largest um, uh, holiday parade in, in the city. Uh, they did their first um, national night out um, this year. So there's a lot of really interesting and, and, and great opportunities to see us expand this and engage more of our, our residents and neighbor, neighbors together. So that's coming. And then actually this past Tuesday we talked a little bit about this. Um, we're going to be looking to for some more opportunities for residents to get engaged with the city around um, some different advisory committees. One is going to be probably our uh, our Measure H and Community Enhancement Fund Advisory Committee. Um, we're also looking at a code enforcement uh, advisory committee for people that need to make appeals for citations that they got from code enforcement. And then we may even be looking at a community oriented policing <coughs> commission. Um, but again, these are still in the, the, the infancy phases of it. We, we just talked about this for the first time on Tuesday. But there'll be some more opportunities for, for people that are, that are interested in getting engaged with our, our city and our community to, to do that. I am proud to tell you that our city is very financially healthy. Um, we had our 14th balanced budget and surplus, uh, which is great. And we just refinanced a whole bunch of bonds, and we actually, we should have had a, like a mortgage burning party or something for this, right, Cyrus? Uh, we now own City Hall uh, free and clear. With it. We refinanced $17 million in debt and are saving ourselves $200,000 a year in payment, uh, in payments, uh, plus we own this, this beauty. Um, let's see. So community enhancement funds, 
How many, how many of you have an idea for our Measure H funds for this year? Raise your hand. I figured, because a few already came up to me. Uh, so starting March 1st, uh, you can apply for the Community Enhancement Fund, and it's going to close, Stacy. how long do they have? Oh, the workshop, sorry. Like, I can see that from right here. Uh, yeah, so there's there's two workshops coming up where you can learn more about it. And it closes, when's it again? February, I mean March 15th. March 15th. And I think that's when you got to apply for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District job, too. So <laughs> get those both in at the same time. <laughs> so free trees. So we've been partnering with SMUD and the Tree Foundation to offer free trees to anybody that wants them. And I think last year on Arbor Day, we... Our goal was to do about 100, right, in Lincoln Village? We did a handful. Um, so we're going to have three planting days. Um, I think one of those is Arbor Day, right? April 8th, I think it is. Um, so we've got Cordova Gardens, you got Cordova Meadows, and Sun River, and you can apply on that website there at Free Trees um, to do, oops, if you want a free tree. All right, so the Hacker Lab. So this is, I, actually, I probably should have Linda come up here and talk more about this. She's really, really into this one. Um, but let me, I'm actually going to read this one. So the city is partnering with Hacker Lab on a feasibility study to determine whether Ranch Cordova is a viable Hacker Lab location. A Hacker Lab location in Ranch Cordova would support the city's innovation, workforce development, education, and learning, and, city, and civic engagement. Focus on continuing to grow and attract talent to Ranch Cordova. So this is a great opportunity for people that are thinking about starting up a tech company or, or um, um, software company. I know we have a couple in the room. I saw Ken back there, one of our, one of our great web designers. Yes, he designed my campaign website. Did a great job. Um, this also support the 18 post-secondary schools that offer an array of educational opportunities within Ranch Cordova. And there's going to be a town hall on this, and a lot of you probably actually got an email from the community council this week about this. So we're going to be having um, a workshop where you can learn more about, oh, I'm sorry, the chamber sent to that, excuse me, uh, at American River Brewing, so you come over, get a couple get a couple beers and learn about becoming a hacker. Um, Sunridge Plaza, I'm not going to say when it's going to open, because it's been a little bit of a moving target, but you can see uh, the, the tile roofs are going on now. They're painting the building, so we're going to be coming up right here pretty soon. Um, very, very exciting to to get a grocery store in my neck of the neighborhood because it's about five miles to the closest grocery store right now for those for that community. Um, and I want to say, let's see here. So we've got um, some of the, the some of the stores already announced. So Soho Sushi, that's the same one that's across the street here. And I don't know who's getting the drive-through out of this one, but either Starbucks or Jim Boys is gonna gonna have a drive-through in there, and a and PM, and so I like drinking beer. So there's a couple of very there's some very good news in this community. Uh, one, we're getting another brewery, Thin uh, Thin Line Brewery, is opening up right next to Costco or near Costco. Um, and then, how many of you know that we have a distillery in our town? And it's the first distillery in over 100 years in Sacramento County to open. Wow. And that's Old River Distilling, right, that we already have. We're getting another one. So J.J. Fister Distilling is going into the winery building over there on Horn Road. So we're really, really excited about that. Uh, Vitek Mortgage is moving their headquarters into Ranch Cordova, the, um, <coughs> I want to say next month, right? Yeah. Uh, we're getting a Red Dragon Restaurant. Um, and I had to look this up. It, so we're also getting in Sunridge Plaza, I think, um, is the meadery is going in, right? Is it not Sunridge? No, somewhere else in town. But it's a meadery. Who knows what mead is? Yeah, that's what a meadery is. I actually had never heard of a cidery until uh, uh, until you said that. So then, but I actually looked that up. Yeah, we're getting a meadery in town. Actually, Donald, if I can interrupt, hmm. drag meadery will be at Court. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I was wondering what that bottle actually was if we were auctioning off that today. But just to let you know, there's also plenty of other places that you can grab a beer. Like I said, we do have um, a Gold River Distilling, uh, Claim Steak opened, it's been open about a year now, American River Brewing um, actually got 
a loan from the Measure H funds to, to expand their tap room, uh, Jeepers Trail, and Lockdown Brewery. So we got a lot of fun stuff. We're, we're, we're actually trying to figure out how we can get our brew bike to go up and down Sunrise Boulevard and taking all these things. Uh, so our Community Enhancement Fund, just some quick economic development news. Uh, this is a handout that pretty much, hopefully you've seen because this, this got sent to, um, to every resident in the city. Uh, but like I said, we did a $250,000 loan to Merritt River Brewing to help them expand their, um, their footprint. Uh, we did some economic enhancements to uh, speed up the Sunridge Plaza development, uh, along with a lot of other things. Oh, and actually, let me go back to this. If you know of a business in Ranch Cordova that's looking to expand, or you know of a business that wants to move to Ranch Cordova, have them talk to Amanda or Kurt or Megan. Anyone? There's Megan. And there's Kurt. And is Amanda back there? No, okay, there's the other arm. Okay. That's our economic development team, and they can help you out with streamlining your permits or whatever it takes to, to get you up and running, running in Ranch Cordova and collecting tax money for us. So, Rio del Oro. This was 15 years in the making, probably started with the county. Um, this is the largest uh, single development in the region. It's actually bigger than downtown Sacramento. It's going to be 12,000 new homes. Uh, let's see, 500,000 acres of wetlands, 16 miles of trails, and nearly 200 acres of parks. Nine new schools for Pulse Cordova just in this one development. And just north of it is Westboro, which we're also, we're also going to get started working on here pretty soon. Um, last I heard, Elliot was saying maybe in about two years they're going to be up and running and, and building houses here. So very, very exciting. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ranch Cordova has more developable land than any other incorporated city in the region. So we are growing, we are growing fast, and this, um, actually we are, the, we are tied for the fastest growing city in the region. Um, but this development really is the plugging that donut hole of a community. We have all that growth in the south that's really cut off from the rest of the, the community. <laughs> this, is, this is what's going to connect everything together. All right, who knows what this picture is? Okay, don't say it. So I had the pleasure of and still serving on the Elk Grove Unified School Naming Committee. Um, and I thought I was just going in there so that I could help name the school that's in our city, and I actually have to name about 20 schools for them. So what I thought was going to be about two meetings, I, I guess it's going to be about 10. Um, but one really exciting thing that I get to, that I, I, we got to share a few weeks ago, and then the school board actually voted on it two weeks ago. Um, is our newest elementary school in Ranch Cordova is going to be named the Robert J. McGarvey Elementary. We all know Bob and we all know his commitment to our community and, and everything that he's done. He, he created a Ranch Cordova Incorporation Committee when there was no committee and, and no one even thinking about it and stuck to it for, what, about 30 years? 25 years? Um, yeah, it's around that time. Yeah. So, 25, great honor to befitting a, a great man and, and a great family. Thank you, Bob, for all that you've done for our community. And it is opening in July. That is year-round school, so we're only about four months away from a, a ribbon cutting, and uh, about 800 kids are going to show up there, including my son. So, very, very excited. And that's a picture of uh, I am Bob at the school board meeting where he got a standing ovation the night that they, they voted the name. Not, so they asked me about this name, um, and the more I've been thinking about it, because we're going to move our St. Baldrick's event from you know, the last couple years we've been having it outside in front of City Hall, we're going to move it to America River, River Brewing. So buzz at St. Baldrick's this year. Um, I think I'm going to take Uber home, uh, just to be on the safe side. But uh, where's Melody? Melody, right there front and center, getting her, her, her wonderful spring haircut. Um, are we keeping this a secret from Conrad again? Okay. <laughs> All right, it's, it, it's happening again, right? All right. Um, so yeah, my, um, I, along with my son and Melody and a handful of other people, are gonna go get our heads shaved for kids with cancer. So hopefully you can join us for beer and bring your 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 wallets because we're trying to raise money for kids. Let's see here. 
Um, these are all of the fascinating ways and great ways that you can keep track of all of the things that are going on, on in our city. We have our Facebook, our Twitter, our Pinterest, and all these other great things. Um, are we going to put the, if, we go, if you go to our website, you'll probably find all these things too, right? And there's my email and contact. I actually answer that phone that's in my house. So um, if you ever have a question, feel free to give me a call. I will tell you that um, uh, through, the, through the election, the, the thing I got asked the most was about our Promise program. Um, and about 100 phone calls just asking me, who, who qualifies? How does it work? I can tell you right now, all you need to do is talk to the people over there in that, in that table. They can tell you all about it. And I think with that, I'm ready for some questions and answers, and I, right, they said to stop about 10 minutes before one, so I think I did it right. So with that, any questions? None? No, stop. Wow, all right. Well, then enjoy the lovely weather that we still have. Uh, I, I know the last four years we've been praying for rain. I think we need to start praying for it to stop. Um, but with that, have a great weekend.